Okay, so HyperOS 2.0 is here. And I'm talking about the Indian build. Very important because this is what we'll actually get in India. I mean, I have the Poco X7 Pro running the HyperOS 2.0 update. And this tells you three things. Number one, what does HyperOS 2.0 actually bring to India? Number two, what are the features it brings to a mid-range smartphone? And number three, what is it missing? This is Rupesh, you're watching Silicon. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get going. So HyperOS 1 was big on customization. HyperOS 2 makes it even better. I mean, remember these preset lock screen themes? Well, they have gotten a big update in HyperOS 2. Okay, so now get different themes under people, scenery, and Eastern aesthetics, whatever that means. But yeah, some of these new lock screen themes look awesome. They all have cool depth effects, the different customization options, and there's some new features. For example, in this, I like how I can select the colors of the doodle and the background to my liking. I also like that I can change the text in some of these themes to whatever I want. Another big change is that wallpaper and personalization in the settings is now just personalization, and it has a better looking layout. And while the feature set remains mostly the same, the fingerprint effects option brings five new animations, and all of these definitely look way better compared to the fingerprint animations in HyperOS 1. Now moving on to the home screen, first up you get these new so-called soft light wallpapers instead of the shape and shadow wallpapers in the last gen. Same same but different. Strangely though, there's no super wallpapers in the X7 Pro where they were present in the X6 Pro. Anyway, when you now edit the home screen, you can see exactly how many icons you can fit. I also noticed that there's a new UI and a new 4x7 and 5x9 options, aka standard and dense for the home screen layouts. This also means that the icons and widgets are slightly smaller in size now, which is fine if you ask me. Now the widgets panel and widgets remain the same, but I did notice some cool changes to the gallery widget. Number one, it now supports up to 12 photos up from six. Second, when you select a photo, you can add a depth effect to it. You can enter the text you want on the widget, change the font, position, color, everything. Pretty cool. Now from the looks of it, the quick settings panel might look the same, but there's actually some hidden features here. First up, HyperOS 2's quick settings page has support for way more toggles as you can see in the edit page. Second, when you now press hold on the brightness bar, you get these super handy options right here for auto brightness, dark mode and reading mode. This wasn't present before and this is actually useful. Same with the volume panel, a long press brings you all the handy options then and there. By the way, this new volume panel also shows up when you use the volume buttons in the home screen. And this is definitely more minimal now with no blurring across the screen and a more compact design. In fact, just like the new volume panel, there's actually a lot of great subtle yet meaningful changes in HyperOS 2. For example, the apps page in the settings is now completely changed. You now get to see just three menus on the main page and you need to go here for more. In fact, the subtle changes extend from settings to Xiaomi apps as well. I mean, the lock screen activity of the music app now shows a common volume bar for all your devices. The world clock section under the clock app now shows your local time in both digital and analog format. Minimizing an active timer now pins it to an actionable icon on status bar. And now the weather app has animations that are more accurate and more lifelike. I also like how you can drag windows to the right instead of top to put them into floating window. Way more convenient and accessible. Now there's one thing that a lot of Xiaomi and Poco users will all appreciate. No ads and no bloatware. Just kidding. Animations. See, HyperOS 2.0 basically takes the animations from HyperOS 1 and makes it better. I mean, see how when you open the notifications panel, you see the time enlarges gradually instead of skipping frames. Also, when you drag the control center down, it flows instead of dropping all at once. I also notice this bounce effect in a lot of places and basically, animations feel better everywhere. Still not as good as, say, Oxygen OS, but good. HyperOS 2 also includes a lot of new battery features which are seriously handy. For example, the battery protection page in the settings now shows you the battery health, the cycles and manufacturing date. There's also a battery protection option to stop charging after 80%. Now in charging options, you get the top speed charging mode for emergencies when you're willing to compromise battery health for the best charging speed. In additional features, the boost charging speed feature is gone now. Instead, we have a cold endurance mode which limits device performance when you're in extremely low temperatures. I mean, you know how battery drain becomes crazy high when you're in an extremely cold environment? Well, this option fixes that. Now, I'm not sure if it's HyperOS 2 or if it's just a Poco X7 Pro feature, but this now has ecosystem features that were missing in, say, the Poco X6 Pro. I mean, see this interconnectivity page in the settings? This enables a number of cool ecosystem features, especially if you have, say, a Xiaomi Pad. I mean, you can continue tasks of an app on your other device. You can unlock the other device directly from your active device. You can use split screen or floating window features for the shared screen. Yep, complete control. You can also minimize the shared screen into a floating icon when you don't want it. You can also handle calls as they now 
now ring both the devices on calls. There's also a find my device like feature, which is called play sound. You also get notifications like low battery on the device or active on. And there's also clipboard support, which now is synced across devices and works flawlessly. Now it's 2025 and there's obviously a lot of AI, so HyperOS 2.0 does not miss out on AI features too. There's AI Interpreter, which as the name suggests, interprets and translates languages in real time. And the best part is it supports Hindi and works for pretty much everything. You also get this interpreter option in the control center, which actually works in calls, making it super handy. And there's more. The recorder app shows you transcriptions of your recordings with speaker names. You can get summaries. Yeah, everything. There's also some new AI features in the gallery app in HyperOS 2. And yeah, do know that some phones with HyperOS 1 do have these features already, but HyperOS 2 should bring them to almost every single Poco and Xiaomi phone. First up is the AI expand feature, which basically is like a magical wide angle lens for your photo. Then there's remove reflections. And I did not find this making a big change, but you can try it out. There's also the new Eraser Pro, which lets you be more precise with the thickness of the brush and, you know, remove any object or person. And coming to videos, you can now suggest smart edits to it. And this in my testing is kind of limited to brightening up the video, you know, warming the tones, basic stuff. Look, apart from these new HyperOS 2.0 features, there's still a number of features missing from the Chinese builds, from the flagship phones. First up, this is missing AI writing, which I think may be because this is a mid-range phone. I say that because the Xiaomi Pad 7 recently got this with an update and it works, so maybe it will arrive in the future. Not too sure though. A lot of the cool features that we've seen in the Chinese ROM, like the AI dynamic wallpapers, which look really cool, the new AI animated lock screen, yeah, these haven't made it to India. Definitely not on a mid-ranger like the X7 Pro. There's also no circle to search, no file sharing feature to iOS. So yeah, HyperOS 2.0 in India still remains kind of limited. Look, all said and done, the new HyperOS 2.0 update in India adds some good changes, some new features, but would I call it the best Android skin out there? See, I appreciate the better animations, the new changes in features, but no, HyperOS, aka MIUI, still has a long way to go. It's still got bloatware, a lot of recommendations, and unlike the lock screen, which looks very cool, the other UI elements all across the OS don't look as modern or cool as compared to the competition. And if I want to know from all the Xiaomi and Poco fans out there, what do you think of the new HyperOS 2.0 update? What are the features you really, really want from the Chinese builds? Comment down below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, if you haven't already, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.